Hi, hello, Webflowers. If you're new to this channel, I am Nico, Webflow developer and co-founder of Bloggedin, the first Webflow partner agency in Munich, Bavaria. In today's video, we'll be going over this effect which I found on Site Inspire by Victoria. All right, so welcome to the Webflow clonable series where I show you how we at Blogdin build crazy Webflow animations to help companies stand out from the crowd. After this video, you'll be able to clone the page and use it for your own projects. So without further ado, let's jump right into Webflow. So arriving at Webflow, we have basically our simple visual canvas. First of all, I'm going to explain the HTML structure, then the CSS, and after that, we'll be going over to the Webflow animation. All right, so first of all, we go over the HTML structure. So first of all, I've got an embed right here, which I'll explain in just a second. Then we have a simple section with some padding. Then we have a slider wrap. It's, yeah, just naming the slider wrap. And then we have a slider with a mask. The arrows are hidden. And then we have on the bottom part here, the yeah, indicator on which slide we are currently on. Let's go to the mask. So first of all, we have a slide basically, and in this slide we'll have a yeah, stage where basically just the page is inside, and then we have a yeah, sort of a slide wrap again with an image and a heading, which is currently set to height of zero pixels. And the slide is actually set to flex so that the image will be centered. And that's all there is. So for the second slide, it applies the exact same, just with another color and with another image. Okay, let's go over to the embed. So this embed or this CSS which I've written there is basically most of the time regarding to the navigation on the bottom because that's not native. And if you go through it, it's basically just plain CSS. So what I've done right here is I've got the slider dot and this is actually the class which Webflow gives its sliders. Let's go really quickly into the code so you can see this. So inspect that. And if we inspect this, you'll basically see that this is the W slider dot. And um, yeah, that's the class Webflow gives to each slider dots, basically. And then we have the W active class to show what's active. And we can use these classes to write custom CSS with that. And that's exactly what I've done, basically. Okay, so jump right back. And then I've just basically just used the W slider dots and then gave it some CSS. Then I've set the W slider nav, which is also a selector by Webflow, W rounds, and then select the diff child elements and then deleted the border radius because as you may know, when you have the slider element by Webflow, then the dots are yeah, rounded. And with the border radius of zero, we basically delete this round effect. Then coloring the active modes, this class right here is uh, setting a max width of 210 pixels for the heading. And then we also have a left and right vertical writing mode on mobile so that the text basically on mobile has a transform of 90 degrees. All right, so let's go to the Webflow animation. We have two different selectors. So first of all, I'm gonna start with the single slide because that's the important one with the trigger set on slider change. And once the slider is in view, an effect appears and once the slider gets out of view, another effect appears. In this case, it's just the heading which is set a height of 240 pixels so that the heading basically goes from zero to 240 pixels of height. And that's when the slide appears. On slider out, the exact opposite happens. Basically, it's just setting the height of from 240 pixels to again, zero pixels. That's because once you go out the slide, basically the heading again disappears. All right, so going over to the second, Interaction which made more trickier is the mouse move over element. So basically, for your understanding how this works, based on where the mouse cursor is inside of this, 
this block right here and different action appears basically. All right, so first of all, the starter settings, it's mouse X to 50% and mouse Y to 50%. That's the resting state. So that's all the actions which are right now centered, like this image center and the heading, which like right now is not appearing, but once appeared is also centered. Then once I'm getting out of this diff block, then they are going to the exact same center. Otherwise they would, yeah, somehow rest on a different state, what I don't want. So I want them to rest in center. That's why I have this 50 and right here also 50. Then smoothing on 95%, that's just a number to play around with. It's basically the smoothing of how smooth the things move around. Okay, and now going to the mouse X and mouse Y. So remember, that's the X axis. So based on what side I am, and I'm going to live preview mode, the image is moving. So if I'm going to the left, the image goes to the right. If I'm going to the right, the image goes to the left. And that's what I'm telling right here, the interaction. So if I am on the right, then please image go to the left. So that's this thing right here. If I'm on the right, then please go minus 10 pixels. And if I am on the left, then please go 10 pixels to the right. And that's the same, like the same setting with the heading, which we cannot see right here, but it's basically telling the interaction once I am on the right, please go to the left and then vice versa, the same thing. And the same thing goes for the Y axis. So we are getting the Y axis. First of all, the image, let's go for the image. Once I am on the bottom, the image goes up. And once I'm at the top, the image goes down. Yeah, that's essentially what's happening here. Once I'm here on the top base, basically on 0%, it is going to get um, 10 pixels of that yeah, moving down. And then once I'm on the bottom, it's moving it up again, 10 pixels. And that's why I have the minus 10 right here. And the same is happening with the heading right here. Once I'm at the top, it's going 30 pixels down. And once I am at the bottom, it's going to get minus 30 pixels. So 30 pixels up. Yeah, and that's all there is for the mouse move interaction. Yeah, I really like that use case of the Webflow interactions. All right, so that's it for the Webflow tutorial for today. If you want to learn more about Webflow and its animations, then visit our website. It's the first link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video. And till then, happy coding.